So now let's look at, um, you know, we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit in, in the life of a sinner, towards a sinner, how he draws, how he convicts, um, convicts uh, several things, sin, Christ righteousness, judgment, and so on. And also we saw that the Holy Spirit testifies about the Lord Jesus. He is a witness of all the things that has happened. And he testifies, you know, he, he exalts, he glorifies Jesus. Um, so, uh, so that has you know, several, uh, you know, it impacts us in different ways in the sense we as believers, we as followers of Christ, we as ministers. So we don't have to, you know, do try and do the work of the Holy Spirit. We are liberated because we, uh, you know, we know that He does the work of uh, conviction. He does the work of transformation, right? So we can just be faithful in delivering what God has put in our hearts. Uh, we can be faithful in uh, hearing what He wants to say and uh, and or, or receive instruction from Him to to carry out what He wants done, right? Now let's look at uh, chapter eight, which is uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Now this is um, well applicable to all of us, and uh, so we start right from you know the day we accepted the Lord Jesus. You know when we came to Him and received Him and Lord as Lord and Savior, uh, we see that that work of transformation, that change that he brought about, um, something was, you know, we were born again, our spirit, which was dead to God and alive to the works of the enemy, alive to sin, that was born again and regenerated, made alive. Uh, so that work was done by the Holy Spirit. Right? In a believer's life, that is the work that the Holy Spirit does. So, right? so we see um, John chapter 3, in when the Lord Jesus was having the conversation with Nicodemus, the Pharisee, um, he, he says, let's just read verses 1 to 8. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Most Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, one cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, and then they continue on with their conversation, right? And so we see um, the Lord Jesus explaining, um, you know, about uh, who can see the kingdom of God. It says, says, unless a person is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, experience the kingdom, right? And uh, when he says, what is born again? He goes on to explain, unless one is born of the flesh and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of uh, kingdom of God, right? And he says, uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Is, so he's contrasting between physical birth and spiritual birth. So, so he's telling Nicodemus, Nicodemus, I'm actually talking about a spiritual birth. Um, and because we know that what is born of the flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Right? And, and then he goes on to say that, uh, you know, don't marvel that I said you need to be born again because, you know, just like how the wind blows, uh, we can't tell where it comes from where and where it goes, but you can, you know, we, you know the effect of it, right? I'm just paraphrasing here. You know the effect of it. So, so is anyone who is everyone who's born of the spirit. Now that is the work of the spirit. I know we cannot explain it, uh, but you can certainly see the effect of that work, right? So, um, so, so he's contrasting between you know that which is of the flesh, that which is of the spirit. He says that which is born of water, unless one is born of water and the spirit. Verse five. 
he cannot see the you know kingdom of god so uh, water normally represents uh, you know that that verse when we look at verse uh, verse 5 um, okay that some sometimes you know people say uh, or interpret it like maybe it's talking about water baptism right so uh, you know we know that water baptism cannot save a person but in a saved person takes or is baptized in water uh, because of the conviction because of the inward change because of the uh, uh, the the conviction right so it's a it's a sacrament in the church um, and it's which means it's a you know it's it's an act uh, uh, you can call it a spiritual act a religious act a physical act that is laid out uh, by Christ um but that it's that act does not save us but it's actually a declaration of what has already happened right so here when he's saying is that which is born of water and the spirit so it could either mean you know that which is born of the flesh is flesh right he's explaining he's contrasting so he's saying and water uh, a, a natural element so it could be physical birth and spiritual birth you know that which is born of water and the spirit right? you are born of water you know you are physically there but you need to be born of the spirit so, so that right um, but we also see that um it could signify it could uh, point uh, to the fact that a person is born again by the water of the word referring to the work of the holy spirit again or, or the work of uh, you know the quickening work of the word of god in causing a person to be born again you know like for example if you if you look at first uh, peter 1 and verse 23 right that it talks about how we are born again by the incorruptible word of god okay um so a person is born again by the incorruptible word of god and and the lord jesus says in john 15 and verse 3 you know you are clean because of the words that i spoke to you because of the word that i spoke to you you are clean okay and ephesians 5 and 26 verse 26 talks about the fact that we are washed by the water of the word he's talking about the bride being washed cleansed by the water of the word okay so um yes we are born again by the quickening work of the holy spirit and and the word of god right born again by the incorruptible word of god so it could refer to that as well right um so titus 3 verses 4 and 5 um, again talks about the the work of the spirit regenerative work of the spirit um, in bringing us uh, in in the work of uh, a new life or being born again right so uh, was titus three, sorry 3 and verse 4 but when the kindness and the love of god our savior towards man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy spirit through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy spirit right the holy spirit did this work and uh, verse 6 whom he poured out on us abundantly through jesus christ our savior right so we became heirs according to the hope of eternal life we are justified by his grace and so on so um, verse um, 5 not by works of righteousness we have done but according to his mercy he has saved us okay this is also yeah i think that's uh, what you asked now john um that john 3 verse 5 this is also mean water baptism okay john 3 and verse 5 huh? uh, john 3 and verse 5 is what we saw you know that contrast between physical birth and uh, spiritual birth um and titus 3 verses 4 and 5 also talks about the work of the holy spirit in renewing and regeneration so uh, it does not talk about water baptism as such uh, john because water baptism we know is a is a is a physical act but it has of course it has spiritual uh, significance but it's more of a declaration of the death burial and resurrection Right, um, like when we look at Romans uh, chapter six, no? Romans six, uh, uh, um, 
talks about uh, 6 and verse 3. Uh, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Um, we were buried with him through baptism into death. And just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. Uh, so he's referring to the death, burial, resurrection. So the old uh, me is, uh, you know, it's an indication now, it's a declaration of the, my death, uh, burial, and resurrection, and I'm walking in the newness of life. So um, these two scriptures, John 3, verse 5, and also, uh, you know, Titus 3, uh, do not refer to water baptism, right? But it's referring to uh, the, the born-again work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit in regenerating, in uh, renewing us, right? Okay, boss. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I know, you know. Uh, I've also heard, you know, like people teaching about that, um, that the water somehow, you know. But we know that, you know. I think where does it say? Uh, where Peter says, I think he says, you know, we know that it's not of the washing of the water of the filth, you know, uh, of the, you know, there's no physical, there's nothing in the water. Um, but it is a pro proclamation that uh, you know that you belong to Christ, that uh, your old man is crucified with Christ. Just like communion, you know, it's a very powerful proclamation. It's a proclamation to the enemy. It's a proclamation to the people, um, and it's your you're declaring uh, what happened on the cross, and uh, the fact that what happened on the cross is affecting you. You know, you're declaring that, and because of that, it has, of course. You know, spiritual significance. There is, you know, some of the strongholds are broken, and people have testified, right, saying that, yeah, I came out of. Um, I, I I remember hearing one testimony. I came out of the, you know, baptism tank, and you know, uh, from that time, all addictions. You know, he was addicted to smoking, uh, and he would feel terribly guilty about it, and you know, as a believer, but you know, after that, it was it was a declaration of the full and final finished work of the cross and, and the fact that, uh, you know, that what impact it has on you, um, on the enemy and so on. So, uh, you know, we hear you know, testimony of that. So there, there are, uh, there is a spiritual significance to this particular act. Um, so we, we can't, you know, downplay that, right? So water baptism, communion, the Lord's table, right? Um, but, these verses, typically, when you look at this um, text, it does not refer to water baptism. It talks about the work of the Holy Spirit in regenerating a believer, you know, working and bringing a believer, uh, causing a believer to be born again. So that's the thing, right? Okay. Um, okay. Let's look at a few other scriptures. What does a believe? What does the Holy Spirit do? Okay. Now that a person is born again, um, what does the Holy Spirit do? Okay, so Galatians 4, um, and we also look at uh, Romans uh, 8, okay, Galatians 4, 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Okay, so the Holy Spirit cries out. Uh, the Holy Spirit, whom, uh, Spirit of His Son, into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Okay. Uh, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, you are an heir of God. So this is what the Holy Spirit does in us. Okay. Romans 8, uh, again, brings it out clearly, uh, uh, you know, brings out uh, uh, some more clarity to that same thing about the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, you know, making us sons or giving proof that we are sons and heirs of God. Romans 8.15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, okay, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Okay. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Wow. You know, so this is the thing. So, the fact is that the Holy Spirit, now the person has made a decision, he does the work of regeneration, there's transformation, a person is born again. And the Holy Spirit testifies, bears witness 
with our spirit that we are born again, that we are sons of God, and uh, you know that's that we are children of God, right? Sons and daughters of God, children of God. So, um, so this is the work that the Holy Spirit does. So, even though there need not be you know people to give you strong reasons and say you know you are a child of God, and uh, you know you may not. We, we may not really you know understand the the you know the how the workings of it but there is a strong conviction there is a revelation uh, uh you know an assurance in our hearts that we are children of god and how does that happen like, like uh, even looking at my own life you know uh, uh, i did not have any you know the uh, scriptures to say that I'm a child of God, but I just knew, you know, this uh, this sense of knowing that you are a child of God, the sense of knowing and the assurance that you are a child of God, you're a son and daughter of God, is brought about by the Holy Spirit, right? So, the, so this work in a believer's life who has maybe just put the trust in God, who's just become born again, or maybe has become born again and this work is done by the holy spirit okay so yeah so i think there's a question by robert is there any right age to take baptism well no because the uh, only thing is that um, uh, like philip says you know, to the ethiopian eunuch uh, in acts chapter 8 uh, so the uh, you know he's just born again we don't know how old he was probably uh, you know whatever uh, 30s, 40s, we don't know. Uh, but he, uh, Philip just asked one question there, you know. Um, it's in 8, uh, chapter, Acts chapter 8, and verse, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, verse 36, 37. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Here, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? What stops me from being baptized. In other words, he's asking me, you know, uh, is there any, you know, can I take baptism now? You know, is there anything, any limitation uh, why I should not take baptism? So, um, why I should not be baptized in water? Then Philip answers and he says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Okay. If you believe with all your heart, you may. And what was the eunuch's response? He said, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so they go down, you know, and they, he gets baptized. So that is the thing. So, um, well, what is the right age? Um, there's nothing specified in Scripture. Um, but if a person believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and if they have, you know, received Christ, if they are born again, um, then they can be baptized, right? Um, I think uh, another reference would be uh, Acts chapter 3 itself, where uh, Peter talks about, um, yeah, Acts chapter 3, I think. Uh, uh, at, uh, the scriptures that we saw just now, 38, 39, um, and uh, let me just get that verse, yeah. Um, repent and let Every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, so that's the only thing: repentance. You know, you you change, you repent, and uh, you can be baptized in the name of Christ. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So then we look at uh, uh, the fact that the Holy Spirit brings this. Uh, uh, you know, this understanding, this knowing in our hearts that we are children of God. He also gives us the assurance, right? the assurance, the sense of um, uh, the comfort and the assurance that we are uh, born again, that we have received salvation. Okay, so we see that in um, Romans chapter 8, verse, the, the verses before that, you know, what we saw just now. Uh, we looked at 15, uh, 16, um, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Right? Uh, and then again, um, the Holy Spirit, verse 16, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So he, uh, you know, he bears witness that, that we are children. He gives us that, that assurance uh, in our hearts that we are children. 
Okay, let's look at uh, a couple of other uh, verses. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 8. Um, okay, 4 and verse 8. Um, uh, he, uh, okay, um, let's just read a little before that. Uh, For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Um, well, this is uh, not a direct reference to, uh, you, know, you know, the assurance of salvation, but also, uh, but he's talking about, um, you know, sin. He's talking about not living in lust like Gentiles who do not know God. Um, but he says, you know, you you reject this, then you you are actually rejecting God, and God God has also given us His Holy Spirit. So, so this is not a direct reference. Um, let's look at uh, another scripture, one John three, um, verse twenty four. Okay. 1 John 3 verse 24. Now he who keeps his commands, commandments abides in us, abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, okay, by the spirit whom he has given us. Okay, let me read that again. Now he who keeps his commandments, referring to God's commandments, abides in him, abides in God, and he, God, in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Now, by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us, we know that uh, he abides in us. Okay. So the spirit, spirit of God, uh, this is, he produces that knowing. He gives us that knowing. Um, to know is, you know, the word know means to, uh, of course, intellectually acknowledge certain things. Uh, to come to that understanding. Um, the word know also means truth, knowing truth by experience, right? So he gives us, first of all, uh, of course, the understanding, and that understanding is is also much deeper. It's not just an intellectual ascent, but uh, an experience, right? It's, a, it's an experience. So by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Right. So he will uh, he will also teach us. He will also guide us in, into all these things, right? Uh, into all these uh, truth or, or the revelation of this truth. Uh, he will do that work as well. Okay. Um, so we see that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, causes a person to be born again, and once that person is born again, the Holy Spirit also. Uh, it gives us the sense of um, the sense that we are children of God, the assurance that we are children of God, by whom we call, cry out, or we call out, Abba, Father. Okay, and He also gives us the assurance of salvation, or the assurance of sonship. Okay, so um, while we, you know, so so this kind of. Um, this knowing is is a is it goes much deeper. It is a conviction in our hearts. Okay, so no one can actually argue us out of it. Then, you know, we maybe you know someone can argue and say, okay, maybe uh, you know, this didn't happen, that didn't happen in your life. You you know you. But then this knowing or this understanding that you are a child of God goes beyond that. Right? It, it's much much deeper. It is in our spirit. Because that's the place where the Holy Spirit gives that sense of uh, knowing and revelation. Okay, now let's look at um, several other aspects of uh, what the Holy Spirit does. In uh, so it's, this is exciting to see in everyday life, uh, in in several uh, you know areas, to walk in holiness, to walk uh, you know to how to walk in love and to this uh, and to develop in the fruit of the Spirit. Um, uh, and walk in freedom, the revelatory work, everything. So let's let's look at um, you know. Your, I hope you're keeping your Bible handy. You know, we'll look at several scriptures. Okay. Now, Second Corinthians one and verse twenty two says that um, we are sealed by the Spirit. Okay. Uh, let's read that verse. Second Corinthians chapter one and uh, verse twenty two. Um, 
uh, maybe I'll read verse 21 and 22. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Who has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So the Holy Spirit uh, is, is been given in our hearts and um, he's been given in our hearts as a guarantee, you know, as a uh, the word used there is earnest or, uh, you know, as an initial deposit, right? Initial deposit of the full redemption. Okay. It's, and it's a, you know, like a term that you used for um, maybe something that you buy in installment, you, you pay that initial amount um, and the, and the, and the commodity is yours. The product is yours. Maybe it's a vehicle or something. Um, but you know that the full redemption is going to happen at a later date when that whole, thing is paid, the installment is finished, right? So uh, that is a picture that we have here that is given as the guard, is given as a guarantee. Is, uh, what is that? Um, is a guarantee that there is there is coming a time when the redemption will be full, that our body, bodies will be glorified and there will be a time when we'll see him face to face. Okay, so the, our redemption is, uh, will be complete, right? So he's talking about that. Um, uh, and also, you, you use the word that he has sealed us. Okay, yes, we are sealed. Now, um, when we look at that word, it means that um, it is referring to a seal, uh, uh, a sign that uh, an, uh, an official or a government official or a king or someone puts a fixes on something. Okay. And it uh, also refers to, uh, it has several, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what do you call, an understanding, right? I'm just turning so the page to Ephesians 1, sorry, at the meantime. Uh, Ephesians 1 also, you know, talks about that. You were sealed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, 113. So the fact is that uh, this seal refers to a seal, a sign that that you belong, that we belong to someone. Okay, it's a sign of ownership. Okay, so when uh, when seal is affixed on a uh, on a certain property, you know, it's a it's a sign that it belongs. You know, whoever is the uh, who is who is authorized or who is the authority who's affixing that seal, it uh, they are stating something about that about that property where something should not be open, something should not be, you know, permitted. So that sign, the Holy Spirit is actually, uh, is indicating that we belong, we belong to God, okay? We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And also it, it means that, um, you know, uh, it means that we belong, it means that we are property, uh, it, uh, it is also, meaning that who has the authority, you know, it's referring who has the authority over us, whose possession we are, um, and so on. You know, and attesting to the fact that, yes, um, there is a higher authority, there is a sense of ownership, and so on. So it's, it's wonderful to know that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, that God considers us as his property. God considers us as his possession. God considers us, and he's declaring that no one else has any right. You know, the enemy does not have any right to it. The any, enemy does not have any permission um, to, you know, to do any anything because he affixes that seal, that official sign, the official seal, which is the seal of the Holy Spirit. Right, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So Ephesians 1 and verse 3, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You, we, you and I, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Right, um, And uh, of course, we saw that verse, that the Holy Spirit is given as a guarantee as a uh, earnest or uh, referring pointing to the full redemption okay um so this is what uh, uh, the holy spirit has uh, the presence of the holy spirit indicates right to the powers of darkness to us so we don't have to 
you know sometimes we we do that but we don't have to we don't have to wallow in self pity uh, we don't have to you know walk disheartened right because we belong to jesus right we belong to jesus we are his purchased possession and um, that gives us uh, a sense of belonging right we belong to him it's not like we are orphans it's not like we are abandoned but we are connected belong to him right uh, and he has the authority over our lives so um, you know that's that's a wonderful thing right okay so let's look at um, some of the other aspects okay um romans chapter 6 7 and 8 okay uh, galatians chapter 5 uh, galatians 6 8 talks about the work of dying to the flesh or putting to death the work of the flesh crucifying the flesh which is done by the holy spirit okay so let's um, uh, okay so we won't read through the whole chapters i i you know you can do that but um, let me just pick out a few verses um okay romans chapter 6 okay um okay romans chapter 6 and verse 6 says this knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin um might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin okay and uh, of course the uh, in uh, romans uh, 6 and verse 13 do not present your members as instruments of righteousness unrighteousness to sin but present yourself to god as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to god for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace okay and uh, and several other things about presenting ourselves to god about the about the work that he did of uh, regenerating us because we were baptized into uh, his death by right? the death of uh, christ so we we see that um then in verse um, Uh, you know you can read through verse uh, ch- chapter 6 and 7 which leads up to chapter 8 and uh, and this is what he does you know starting from verse uh, sorry starting from chapter 6 talking about the reality of uh, uh, of being born again of being dead to sin uh, and alive to god he brings us to chapter 8 now the law of the spirit of life in christ chapter 8 and verse 2 the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh okay now when we go to verse um uh verse 9 and uh, and, and 10 and 11 okay now you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he is not his and if christ in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness okay and uh, verse 11 but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you therefore brethren we are not debtors to live to the flesh to live according to the flesh verse 13 if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live okay so he's talking about the reality of the holy spirit living in us and uh, and the fact that we because of that because of that work we can actually put to death the deeds of the body put to death or crucify the flesh okay um typically uh, uh, particularly you know verse 9 you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you uh, and then verse 13 if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live okay um so this work of crucifying or 
or bringing an end to the work of the flesh. Okay, putting to death the work of the flesh is uh, by the Holy Spirit. Okay, but if you if you look at it, you will see that it is um, uh, it is it involves our cooperation also. Right, it involves our cooperation, our initiative, because it says, if by the Spirit, okay, you put to death the deeds of the body, by the Spirit, it is through the empowering, the leading, the guiding of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. Meaning, you know, I cooperate, and uh, I need to bring an end to that. But it's by the empowering, by the understanding and by the leading of the holy spirit the holy spirit will you know prompt us he will uh, give he will empower us he will strengthen our will to say no to the works of the works of the flesh but uh, so but we need to walk in line with it we need to uh, put or bring to an end make a choice you know say Yes, when we have to say no, when we have to so make a choice, make a decision to bring an end to the deeds of the body. And then he says, you will live. Okay, so um, the crucifying work of the flesh. Okay. Romans 1 and verse 4 uh, says, um, let's, let's just read uh, uh, maybe verses 3 and 4. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ the Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. Okay, So he is the spirit of holiness. He works, he does the work of um, you know, bringing holiness into our lives. He does the work of um, bringing us um, the knowledge of holiness and also empowering us to live a holy life. Right? He, in other words, he does the work of perfecting holiness in us, and we see that you know, declared to be son of God with power according to the um, spirit of holiness. You know, he's called the spirit of holiness. So uh, he does that work in the life of the believer. Okay, uh, Romans fifteen and verse sixteen. Romans fifteen and verse sixteen. Um, Paul saying, um, nevertheless, brethren, sorry, verse 15, nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So he's talking about something that the Holy Spirit does. And uh, it's, it's talking about the contribution or the offering that the people are giving and that it might be sanctified or uh, set apart for holy use by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, uh, the work of sanctification done by the Holy Spirit. Right? So we know that the Holy Spirit sanctifies us or separates us um, and consecrates us. Uh, and we see this, not only the person, but also the offering right? in Romans 15, 16. When we look at 1 Corinthians 6 and um, verse 11, okay? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 11, and this we studied when we, uh, when we, when we were studying about in Christ. Um, let me just read from verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, and some such were some of you, but you were washed and you but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So, you know, he's lists down all the all the you know the, the reality of the past life, you know, how they were. And uh, you know, it's it's not a very good list. You know, it talks about the depth of depravity of sin that they sinful lifestyle that they walked in. So he lists all that. And also warns them, we you know, that they will not inherit the kingdom of God, having such a lifestyle of sin. And he says, you know, such were some of you. 
okay so in the content i saying this is how you were but you were changed right but you were washed but you were justified and you were sanctified in the name of the lord and by the work of the holy spirit so this work of sanctification you know he is the holy spirit he is a spirit who sanctifies meaning he he sets us apart he draws us from the depths of sin uh the you know we might be struggling in it we might be walking in it we might be so um you know frustrated by it you know as believers also you know here of course he's talking about people who were born again uh, and this was their past lifestyle okay but even you know for a believer like we uh, the holy spirit does this work of sanctification right? even if there are you know something to do with the world something to do with the flesh something to do with you know, these kinds of things um, any kinds of addictions or anything the holy spirit draws us draws us out separates us and gives us uh, you know gives us the knowledge of uh, righteousness and holiness and the beauty of it and causes us to walk in it right um you know you can refer to the other scriptures also there um let's look at uh, 1 corinthians 3 and verse 16 and also you know 1 corinthians 6 you know again that talks about uh, how because of the indwelling presence of the holy spirit you know uh, the fact that we are a dwelling place and uh, and so on right 1 corinthians 3 and uh, and verse um uh, 16 right so he says do you not know that you are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwells in you if anyone defiles the temple of god god will defile god will destroy him for the temple of god is holy which temple you are okay so here the context is um uh, of course he's saying that you are the temple of god meaning as believers collectively god dwells in you okay so he's referring to a group here and the corinthians and uh, he's saying you know you are the temple of god do you not know that that uh, the temple of god is holy that spirit of god dwells in you right so collectively as uh, as believers we are a dwelling place of god right we are the temple of the holy spirit and therefore you know as temples of the holy spirit you know uh he's called the holy spirit because he is holy so as temples of the holy spirit you know he he brings that into our lives he brings that character he brings that aspect into our lives so we cannot walk in the things of the flesh and continue to walk in the things of the flesh and be happy about it you know as believers we will be miserable as believers we will be convicted because of the work of the holy spirit he will draw us to greater levels of holiness greater levels of sanctification right uh, but again you know it's a it's we need to cooperate he will lead us and we need to uh, cooperate but this is a ministry of the spirit of god right if you look at the next verse which is next reference which is uh, 1 corinthians 6 and was 19 so that is referring to the individual right he's saying do you not know that your body is the temple of god temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not your own for you were bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's okay so this is a reference to the individual that was a reference to a collectively to the group of believers uh, the reality is that whether you're a you know collectively as believers or an individual that we are the temple of god right we host the presence of god the we uh, the the you know the holy spirit abides or uh, dwells in us right so um, because of which you know paul says you know you are not your own right you are the temple of god you are a temple of the holy spirit and you were bought at a price you are not your own therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are which are actually god's right and you have the spirit dwelling in you right so so now that's a great um, revelation a great understanding uh, and for us to walk in holiness you know and also for us not to 
be self deceived in any way when it comes to the you know the work of the flesh when it comes to things of the flesh right um many times uh, we give ourselves reasons we give ourselves strong reasons that hey it's okay right uh, especially when when people are not watching when people are not there uh, we think it's okay to indulge in maybe acts of sin or you know we we tell ourselves but the fact is that god is so close to us right in fact he is in us so there is no escaping right uh, we, we we may not have human authorities or uh, you know people with special oversight over us at all times but we do have the holy spirit because we are the temple of the holy spirit and as we if our awareness of that you know if our understanding of that um you know when we have an understanding of that then we would not really make choices to gratify the flesh right and because he indwells us we know that he speaks to us and if we would listen he will lead us if we would if we would follow okay and that is to walk in holiness and to walk in sanctification right because that is his nature and that is what he indwells us to do right by the spirit like we saw romans chapter 8 you know by the spirit we put to death the deeds of the body we will live right um the verses before that warn us about not to be carnally minded and right? not to be fleshly minded because that will lead us to death but to be uh, to be spiritually minded right okay so we'll uh, we'll stop here i think we have a couple of minutes maybe we can look at um uh, we can we can look at uh, uh, the next one maybe just a couple of references we can look at romans 5:5 um romans 5:5 uh, which says that uh, now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who has given to us so um, we are talking about you know walking in the spirit meaning uh, when we live out when we uh, when we live our life you know how can i live um being filled with the spirit how can i live uh live my daily life in line with the spirit of god in line with uh you know how he would want me to walk or how can i walk in step with the holy spirit okay so that is walking in the spirit walking as led by the spirit making those spirit led choices okay so the so we see here romans 5 5 that the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us so uh, which is again an eye opener because we see that uh, it is the love of god okay meaning god kind of love that love that belongs to god which is from god he that that is the kind of love if you want to qualify okay what is the you know the quality of love this is it what we see in 1 corinthians 13 right which is read out at all most of the weddings right that is love that is patient and kind and which does not braid itself now which is not selfish which is not envious you know, that kind of love the god kind of love what has happened the holy spirit he brought into our lives it has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us okay so he has brought that that god kind of love you know not the man's love but god kind of love which is unconditional which is uh, uh, which is the agape kind of love which is uh, you know in spite of love right it says the love it says i you know i care for you i love you in spite of you know, that's the kind of love and that's the kind of love he has brought into our hearts now the reason is that we would walk in that love right? that we would live out that kind of love and we would display that kind of love towards ourselves towards others right and uh, uh towards whom ever we we are in contact with because it's a god kind of love you know he has brought it to us he has given it to us for us to 
experience and to you know display and to give away right to experience and to communicate so so the first thing is for us to experience you know this is the kind of love the god kind of love the holy spirit has you know we are loved with and the holy spirit has brought into poured out into my heart to give an understanding of how much god loves me uh the god kind of love and how much you know uh, that the fact that i have the resources to show that same kind of love to others okay and this is made possible by the holy spirit okay um uh, another verse and then we'll stop okay oh, we're already out of time okay so we'll stop here and um, and then we'll continue in the next class okay um, just go through the notes you know we looked at a lot of scripture today so it'll it'll help if you can just go through some of these uh, verses and uh, which gives us a you know greater depth of meaning and understanding about the work of the holy spirit in in our lives right okay thank you so we'll stop you right here uh god bless we'll meet again